Hi there, today we're going to make some cool motion graphics like this in DaVinci Resolve. It's going to be very fun, and we're all going to have a good time. I'm here in Resolve, I've got a blank timeline, I'm going to come over to Effects, drag and drop a fusion composition right on there, and uh, extend that for as, as long as I want my uh, general effect to go on for. You can change this after the fact, but with that on the timeline, I will click this button to load in the fusion page. Now if you haven't done much in the fusion page, I'm going to try to walk you through it. Uh, down here we have our node viewer, and by default the only thing you will have is the media out node. Whatever you build, whatever you do on the fusion page will get piped back into that and it will get sent back to the edit page. And I'm going to start by creating a text plus node. Uh, first I'm going to press shift space, that will pull up this little search bar and I can type in text and we will have text plus. And if I preview that it will load into one of these viewers. You have two viewers uh, by default if you have this window toggled. Uh, in any node, you can press one or two to pull up that specific node uh, in your viewer. You'll see right now this text plus is not connected to the media out. So if I preview the media out on viewer two, there's nothing until I connect it. And even then, it's just transparent until I come into this and type in something like, hello. But we don't want hello. Uh, we want uh, something else. And I'm going to start here um, with something a little advanced but very, very cool. I'm going to right click on this node. I can either right click on this node down here or uh, right click on the name of the node in the inspector. And I'm going to come down to edit controls. That will give us this window, um, which is very complex. Um, we're going to use it pretty basically. I'm just going to type uh, in this name. By default, it's new control. I'm going to type in here. Hmm, what am I going to type? I'm going to type in here main value caps are important and I will add a space in here. Um, we'll talk about um, how to deal with that space in a second. But what I am doing is I am adding a control to this node. I'm adding a number control and I'm going to come down here on this input and change it to slider. Now you have lots of sliders on lots of tools. So this slider, I'm going to set a default of 50. The range will be zero to 100 and I'm going to check this box to make it an integer so as it slides it will only ever go to whole numbers. I'll click that and if I click OK um, because I have this page over here set to user I could change this to another page but it's set to user if I click OK then now on that text plus node over here in the inspector we have a new panel called user and hey there I have this main value parameter it's set to 50 you can go all the way down to zero or up to 100. Now like a lot of parameters you can always come in here and uh, like change this to 200, type in something manually and it will adjust for that. That is something you can uh, control for in that menu, uh, but this isn't something we are going to be directly controlling. Uh, so I will just set this back to 50 because this new value is pretty much just gonna be a workspace for us. Immediately I'm going to right click and go to modify with perturb. That enables this modifiers panel over here and if I go to that, uh, you'll see we are starting at a value of 60. We have a random seed, which I will talk about soon. We have strength, wobble, and speed. Uh, let me jump ahead so we can start to see what's going on. Uh, I'm going back to tools, so the major tools for this text. And if I hover over this main value, then down in the corner, I will zoom in. Uh, it shows you the specific uh, location or coordinates or name of this value. You see uh, text one dot main value. Text one is the name of the text plus node we created and then main value um, without the space, that's where I came back to it, is the name of this control. So in things like expressions, that's how you can point uh, other variables to this variable. It's a little simpler when you deal on the same node. So if I come back to text, right click in this text area and come to expression, if I just type in here, main value, click away, you see, hey, it's a 50. That was the default starting parameter, but we also have that perturb on it. And say if I pull this strength up to 50, then when I press play, that number is going to wiggle. It's going to wiggle between zero and 100. It's between zero and 100 because we are starting this value at 50. It has a strength of 50. So it will uh, decrease by that strength and you know add to itself by that strength. This perturb is you know a little leisurely and because of that um, speed, um, it's not changing too far from 50. If I pull up this wobble, then it will change direction more often. And if I pull up this speed, you know it'll do the entire thing faster. Speed's kind of a lot. You can balance these however you want. If I pull down wobble, but pull up speed, 
then we'll get a little bit more of a roaming where, where I believe it should hit, you know, higher highs and lower lows. Uh, but it'll only ever peak out at zero or 100, which I would imagine is pretty rare. So, hey, we have, uh, you know, our first little asset. I'll pull up a bubble a little bit. We can always uh, come back, and we probably will come back um, and deal with these settings later. Ooh, let's talk about reseed real quick. So this is uh, doing random motion, right? And that randomness is driven by this random seed. So this is randomly wiggling, but if you want it to randomly wiggle different, you just click this reseed button, and the number will change, and actually, you know, the wiggle up to that point will also change. So if uh, you have random motion, but you don't like the specific look of the random motion, reseed. This is cool, we're gonna move on, but we are going to keep uh, coming back to this main value. Uh, but first, uh, one, one other cool small tip. So I'm creating sort of this warning label, like you might see in some like sci-fi UI. So as this number, you know, gets closer to 100, it turns more red. We're gonna create all these things to, to support that. But, you know, 100 what? So um, after this main value, I'm just gonna uh, space, period, period, space, parentheses, I'm going to type in the percentage point sign, close parentheses. And when I click away, uh, it will just add uh, that little parentheses. So now as this wiggles, it is, you know, wiggling that that parentheses. If you want a space in there, you can always add a space uh, inside the parentheses right before that. Nice. But I think it looks better right on there. Cool. Let's move on. Uh, we're going to move on by creating a uh, white solid. So I'll create a new background node. I clicked on this bar here for that. I'm gonna pull up all of these so we have a nice white solid. And if I preview that on viewer two, yeah, the entire thing is this white solid. But if I click this little icon here to add a polygon mask to that, it'll go away because I haven't painted on a mask yet. But if I just do one line here, I'm holding shift so it's a straight line, do one line here, and then pull up the border width. Hey, we will have a little line. Now, super important, uh, this little length parameter here, if I pull this down, the length will shrink. And uh, very conveniently, this length is a zero to one scale. And zero to one just happens uh, to be like the most compatible thing ever with a zero to 100 scale. So uh, check this out. We've shown off some expression stuff. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna trust you a little bit. We're gonna go uh, a little bit of a different way um, instead of a simple expression. We're going to use modifiers and a cool general rule of thumb. Expressions are awesome, but Sometimes, and especially when you stack lots of them in, in a uh, preset, they can slow that preset or that effect down. That's something I want to go, uh, I think, into specifics uh, in a later video, get really technical. We're trying to keep things a little light here. So what I'm going to do is right-click on length, go to modify with calculation. That will open up in modifiers. And hey, we just have uh, one value, a second value, and then hey, how do you want those two values to interact? You can add, subtract, multiply, divide, all of that. Very cool. Now on that text one, we have that main value slider, and we didn't right click and publish that, but we added a modifier right here. So we added this separate deal over here, and all the math this is doing is kicking out a result, a value that is, you know, right now 26. So back on this polygon, back on the modifier for that, in this calculation, on this first operand, I'm gonna right click and go to connect to perturb value and uh, that will pull the uh, modifier um, so you can see them because they're linked together. So now they're sort of stored together. Back on the calculation, you see, hey, now 25 point point whatever, whatever, whatever. Now, uh, this is very interesting uh, because that first control, we turned integer on, but the modifier wasn't set to integer, right? So the modifier was running all this thing and then when it changed the slider, that's when it was you know, rounding to a whole number. So we'll see how this goes. We might need to do some expression stuff on top. Okay. But if I change this operand to divide first by second, then I just divide this by 100, then back on length, uh, that will get us a, a 0.25. Instead of 25%, it is 0.25, which, hey, is 25%. Now um, I will drag the output of this background node over the output of this text node, which will create a nice little merge for us. And if I preview that, we will have the line, we will have the text. I'll go ahead and grab that text, move the position just under this line for right now. And because both of these are pulling from that same perturb value, then hey, as the text change, the line is wiggling in like perfect link with that. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, first, uh, let's position these a little bit. Let's keep going. I think we're gonna add uh, two main other elements in. I'm gonna add another uh, text plus node. Uh, let's try just type in here warning connect that up 
see where that comes in. Yeah, that's fine. Open Sans font going pretty good. Uh, I'm going to scale this up, position it here, maybe. Yeah, like there. Uh, we're going to try to build build a nice little comp here. Um, so I'm going to grab my uh, masks. I'm going to click over to this selection op option so I can drag those over here just to the side. Now we have that line over to the side. Move the text over as well. And oh no, this is drifting. You want to know why? Because over on Polygon, we have this shape animation option. Uh, whenever you create a mask, it automatically sets a keyframe on the shape animation. But if you right click on here, you can go to remove that Polygon polyline. It will get rid of all keyframes and it will just stay wherever you put the mask. Now what I am trying to do is just balance these elements a bit. Let's see, if I pull this border width, you know, make it nice, a, a little bit chunkier. Uh, pull this first text down a bit, maybe scale up to match. Pull in the tracking on this warning, pull size up more. Let's see how this feels if I come down here and then move this mask over to the side a bit more. Have the text to match because what I'm going to do next uh, I'm going to pull in another quick solid, and I'm going to mask that with this rectangle. I'm going to increase this so it goes completely around this graphic. Well, we aren't connected yet. If I do that, you will see, oh, it is solid. But on this rectangle, I am changing, unchecking solid, pulling up the border width. So now we have this little box, and I'll pull up corner radius just a little bit so it rounds in. You can kind of see it coming together a little bit. Um, Design is not what I do, but from here, you know, you can adjust these parameters so that they do uh, perfectly sit in frame or, you know, sit in frame a little bit better. Cool. Just balance these. Nice little bit. Okay. Now we have a warning light, but we only want the warning to appear when this, you know, starts to spike towards 100. So on this merge connecting this warning text on the merge, we have this blend option. Blend, that will be your main opacity for stuff coming into the foreground. And that is also a zero to one scale. So I can right click, come to, connect to calculation, remember, because calculation is the one dividing it by 100, result. And now that opacity will also be tied to that little progress bar. So as it gets closer, we'll be like, hey, warning, uh, uh. Now this does, you know, start to be visible at all, you know, down by like 20%. But as this spikes, you know, the warning becomes a little clearer. Now, uh, let's talk about some cool masking stuff because we have this whole little shape. Now, what do we do if we want all of this to be red? Uh, we have all these different text and background layers. You could always go in here and change all of these uh, settings to red, but we're also gonna be animating this color. So check this out, let's say, I just create a new solid, make it red, and uh, take this final merge, and I can pipe that into the blue input on this red background, which is the mask input. And then all of a sudden, hey, everything is red. That's pretty cool. I could connect that to the media out. Uh, but again, uh, red is bad, and it only is bad when we are spiking towards 100. So let's do some more fun expression stuff. And the way we're going to do this is pretty cool. I am pulling up green and blue, so we are back to white. But on green, I'm going to modify with calculation. And here we're going to start with one. Uh, one meaning that slider all the way up. So like the green slider is all the way up. And we're changing this to subtract. And we are going to subtract, connect to that calculation. Now the lower it is, the higher the green value will be. And then as it spikes up, the green will go down. Which, you know, in this instance just makes it more purple. But if we come back to this blue and connect to that calculation on green. Now, as that spikes, it gets red. And the rest of the time, it's kinda, it's kinda the pinkish salmon. I don't know. Let's check this out. Uh, we have so many different elements coming from this one custom slider we created. You know what I'm gonna do? I am gonna go ahead and on that warning, just add in like fuel level warning. Maybe bring that down there. Line spacing, you know, no, fill the space a little bit more. But oh no, actually no, you want more fuel. Engine, heat, how about that? It doesn't need to make sense. You get what we're going for. Yeah, I think it's cool. <laughs> and of course we have, you know, gone off a bit center here, but now after this background, let's go ahead and just add another transform and we can sort of uh, make sure we're previewing that. Center this back up. And at any time we can go back to that first text node where we have uh, that main value we created hop over to modifiers and we have that perturb. Um, we can change the wobble if we want it to be, you know, more wobbly. The speed if we want it to go, ooh, oh, okay. It's speed, you know, really pushes it up there. 
Well, again, that is very, yeah. Mess with these, reseed it, do all sorts of different stuff. Let's do one final thing. Say this is on like a computer screen or something. Let's create a super simple like pixelate uh, look. I will do that first with this, hey, white solid. And on that, I'm going to create just a rectangle mask. We have this shape and I am, uh, we'll see how this looks. I'm gonna pull this up so it almost fills the entire screen. Just give it a little bit of a border and I'm gonna soft edge that, uh, not border, with soft edge that just a hair so it starts to get a little blurry as it approaches that border. And actually what I'm gonna do here is very interesting. Um, instead of after the background, sometimes this messes things up, uh, but I'm gonna create a transform node and instead of, and this rectangle is like mask data, it's this black and white uh, alpha layer shape. And while uh, by default, if you drag this over transform, it will go into the blue uh, mask input, you can also put it into this main input here. Now, and then if I preview my transform, it looks the same, but now we can use these transform controls. I'm gonna change this edges to wrap. And as I pull down the size, hey, we start to get boxes. Whoops. And as I pull these down, we have this really cool little grid. And I can hop back to rectangle. I can pull that border in a little bit pull up that soft edge if I want them to be a little blurry or something like that. Of course, you can fine tune as much as you want. Pull that transform down even more. And uh, then after that transform, I will pull that into the shape layer for the background. So now this is all, if you zoom in technically, these will be transparent. And let's go ahead and figure out how to mask this together. So uh, I'm gonna create a new background node, pull down the alpha so it's completely transparent. And I'm gonna merge over this entire scene we created, right? So now this warning sign is the foreground layer on this merge, which is going to our media out. And I'm gonna use this new pixel grid we created. Pull this down here. I'm gonna drag that into the blue mask input. And now if you zoom in, hey, the, the, the entire thing's kind of pixely. Maybe after that, you add like a nice little like soft glow. Uh, which will sort of, ooh, that's actually coming together pretty good. Uh, you can change the setting on that. That will uh, actually sort of like fill in the gap a little bit between that, depending on the size, different stuff you're doing. Ooh, ooh, that gets pretty extreme. You can do some cool stuff. Just add a few layers of texture. And yeah, especially as that like spikes towards red, blur gets crazy glow, you have this number. This can be one small part of an entire scene with like, custom UI elements, you can go track this into your scene, you could do all sorts of like uh, fun futuristic stuff. And hey, uh, I'll just sit and waiting for you in the Fusion page. Ooh, some of the stuff we showed off in here, you can take and absolutely run with. So I hope you do, I hope you like this video. Uh, if you think this is pretty cool, let me know. If you would like other like UI elements, I've done some stuff like this in the past, uh, let me know. Uh, but thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.